Welcome, fellow detectives, to Boiler Room Detective. This case is the case of the tripped auxiliary low water cutoff. When we arrived at the building, the owner told us the lone boiler kept tripping the auxiliary low water cutoff. He would have to press the reset button to start the boiler again. The owner suspected the boiler feed pump wasn't running. The boiler had an older McDonnell Miller 150 as the primary low water cutoff and a McDonnell Miller number 67 as the auxiliary low water cutoff. Both of these controls used floats to control the water level. The primary control, the 150, had two functions. It would cycle the boiler feed pump to maintain the proper water level inside the boiler. It also served as a low water cutoff that would shut off the burner if the boiler water level dropped below the set point. If the water level continued to fall, the auxiliary low water cutoff, the 67, would shut off the boiler. The burner started after pressing the reset button on the 67 low water cutoff. I opened the blow down valve for the 150 control, saw the burner shut off, and heard the boiler feed pump start. The pump stayed on until the water level reached a proper elevation about an inch above the cast horizontal line on the 150 control. Once the water level was there, the burner started again. While the boiler was running, I looked around the room to see if anything was unusual. Just then, the burner stopped. I walked around the front and saw no water line in the gauge glass. Holding a pencil, Behind the gauge glass, I saw the gauge glass was empty. Sometimes it's tough to know whether the gauge glass is empty or flooded, so I used a trick I learned from Dan Holian. If you hold a pencil behind the gauge glass, the flooded gauge glass will show the pencil is broken at a 45 degree angle and an empty gauge will show the pencil as intact. Why didn't the boiler feed pump start, I wondered. Opening the blowdown valve on the 150 control, the pump started and stayed on until the normal water level was achieved. I checked the wiring connections for the 150 and the feed water pump. They were snug. The next step, which I hated doing because the system had steam pressure and the control was hot, was to blow off the steam, drain the boiler below the low water cutoffs, and open the primary low water cutoff. After pulling the head assembly out, I let the leftover steam vent for a bit. Once it cleared, I checked the float and it seemed fine. Inside the float chamber, I saw a buildup of mud and dirt on the sides. Using a long screwdriver, I cleaned off the buildup and removed it. I sprayed water inside the float chamber to clean it. Could this affect the float operation, I wondered? The 67 control was next and it didn't have as much buildup. The boiler ran perfectly after reassembling the low water cutoffs and refilling the boiler. The mud inside the float chamber did impede the float's movements. I started doing this test on every steam boiler after. Others must have had the same problem, and now several boiler insurance companies are requiring the same test. They call it the evaporation test. It is supposed to simulate actual operating conditions inside the control. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com has my monthly blog posts on steam systems for breweries, and Fire Ice Heat is my company website. I have written 11 books on boilers, and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you can find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I hope to see you on the next case.